Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let us pray. Father, this morning we celebrate your goodness. We celebrate your hand of protection, of preservation, of security over each and every one of us on this platform. It is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the giver of life. That is why we are alive this morning to fellowship and to commune with you. We present ourselves, our bodies before you this morning. We ask that, Father, every form of darkness in our lives, by your word, you enlighten it. Father, we ask that you open our understanding to understand the scriptures this morning as you speak to our beings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We also ask for your manifested presence to be with us in this morning's program, to lead us, to teach us, to touch us, and to deliver us from all our afflictions in the name of the Lord Jesus. Receive our praise this morning, and thank you once again for your goodness that continues to run after us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for another day of your presence. Let's worship the Lord together.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now we continue with our general prayers this morning. Brother Jesus will be leading us. Unmute yourself, please. We're still not hearing you. All right, can you hear me? Go ahead now. Okay, thank you. Sorry for that. Sorry for that. All right, um, praise the name of the living God. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just bless you this morning for our prayer time. We ask that, Lord, our prayers be ascended unto you as a sweet smelling sacrifice. This morning, our first prayer is that, Father, we're going to pray for our, pers our personal prayers. Uh, These are prayers for ourselves this morning. Amen. Praise the name of our first prayer is that, Father, thank you for your mighty hand upon me and my family, and for supernatural increase that we are experiencing by your hand in our lives. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Father, thank you, Lord, for your mighty hand upon me and my family, and for supernatural increase that we are experiencing by your hand in our lives. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning, to God, and we bless you, we worship you, with God. Lord, David said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits of God. For that this morning, we say thank you. Thank you for your mighty hand upon me and my family, and for your supernatural natural increase, Lord, that we are experiencing by your hand in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Glory, honor, and praise is your name, Jehovah. Father, we just exalt and we thank you, O God. We bless you and we worship you, O God. Thank you, O God, for your mighty hand upon my family, O God. And thank you for your supernatural increase, O God, that we are experiencing by your hand in our lives, O God. We thank you, O Lord, for your rain that has come down upon us, O God. Thank Thank you for your mighty hand of help that is with us, O God. Yes, Lord, this whole week we've been hearing about your, your word of help, how you help your children. And we say thank you, Lord, for that help that has come down upon my family. Thank you, O God, for your mighty hand, O God, oh, upon my family and for that supernatural increase. Thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now I pray on my two is the Father, Lord. I pray you release your grace for sanctification upon me, making me fit for your use in my life, oh God. Oh Lord, this morning we pray. We pray, so Father God. Lord, release your grace for sanctification upon me, oh God, making me fit for your use in all my life, oh God. Father God, the same grace you released upon Paul, oh God. The same grace you released upon Peter. The same grace you released upon our Lord Jesus Christ, oh God. Oh Lord, release that same grace upon me, today and make me fit for your use in all my life in the name of Jesus Christ of God. Lord, protect me from sin, oh God. Protect me from all forms of filthiness, oh God. Make me clean and make me of, of to qualify for your use, oh God. Sanctify me, oh God. Let your grace for sanctification be upon me, oh God. Making me fit for your use in every area of my life, oh God. Lord, make me of a good use to you, oh God. God. Sanctify me with the blood of Jesus Christ, O God. Cleanse me, O God. Let your grace come upon me, O God, and make me fit for your use. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, O God. Oh, blessed be your majesty, O God. Now our prayer my is a Father, by your spirit working in me, cause me to walk in your statutes, keep in your judgment, and to always do your will, O God. Let me be obedient to the faith, bringing, up, bringing about moments of beauty indeed in my life, O God. Father, by your spirit, by your Holy Spirit working in me, 
cause me to walk in your statutes of God, keep in your judgment of God, and to always do your will, Lord. Your word says that, Father, you are able to sanctify yourself in us, God. Your word says in Ezekiel, you are able to sanctify yourself in us, God. You are able, oh God, to take our stony heart and put his not a soft heart, a heart that will follow your statutes and your judgment and do your will, oh God. A heart that will be obedient to you, oh God. Now, my prayers, the Father God, by your spirit working in me, cause me to walk in your statutes, oh God, keeping your judgments, oh God, and to always do your will, oh God. Let me be obedient to the faith, bringing about moments of beauty indeed in my life, oh God. For Lord, we know that your beauty, that obedience brings beauty, oh God. Obedience to your word, the Lord, brings beauty in our lives, oh God. For they help me to be obedient to the word of God. Give me that spirit of obedience, oh God. That spirit that you gave unto Abraham, oh God. That Abraham was obedient unto you, oh God. Even unto the sacrifice of his son, Isaac, oh God. Lord, give me that spirit, oh God. Make me obedient unto you, oh God. That, Lord, you will bring upon me moments of beauty indeed in my life. Thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, oh God. Oh, be thou exalted and be thou glorified. Thank you, Lord Jesus God. Oh, Lord, that Lord, you have made me obedient to your faith, oh God, and bringing me a more about moments of beauty indeed in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now our prayer number four says, Father, go before me in this land and let every resistance to my enlightenment be broken to pieces. Hold my right hand and subdue this land and its forces before me. Oh, Father, Lord, this is my prayer this morning to you, O God. My dear Lord, my dear Father, my God, my soul, my butler. Oh, my strength is you, O God. Father, go before me this, in this land, O God, and let every resistance to my enlightenment be broken into peace of God. Hold my right hand and subdue this land and this body before me. Just as you led the Israelites into the promised land of God. Just as you fought their battles for them of God. Just as you brought hailstones upon the enemies of Israel in that valley and you killed their enemies of God and gave them victory. For that today of God, go before you of God. Go before you in this land of God. And let every resistance to my enlightenment be broken to pieces in the name of Jesus Christ God. The Bible says in your presence, Lord, and when the rock smells like wax in fire, oh God, Lord, let every resistance to my life be broken down in pieces in the name of Jesus Christ. Hold my right hand, oh God, above my right hand, oh God, like cross which is abdue this land and its forces before me in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Our Lord Jesus said, if I need to fight presently, I will ask my Father and he will send me 12 millions of angels. For that today, send me 12 millions of angels to fight my battles for me in Jesus' name of God. Amen. I pray to my father, say, Father, fill me, I pray, with the knowledge of your will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that I might walk worthy of you unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work of God. Oh, Lord, this is our prayer to you this morning, my Father, my God. Lord, fill me, fill me, oh God, I pray thee, with the knowledge of your will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding of God, that I might walk worthy of you unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work of God. Father, I give you your spirit of wisdom, O God. Oh, your spirit of understanding, O God. Your spirit of counsel, your spirit of wisdom. Your spirit, the spirit of God, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Give me your spirit of wisdom and understanding, O God. Oh, my Lord, fill me, O God, I pray, with that knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that I might walk worthy of you, O God, unto all pleasing and being fruitful in every good work of God. You said unto Abraham, Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect, O God. God. Help me, Lord, to walk before you and be perfect, oh God. Help me that my ways will please you, oh God. That even you will cause my enemies to be at peace with me, oh God. Rise up and help me today, oh God. Save me hell from every day. Fill me up, oh God, I pray thee, with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that I might walk worthy of you, oh God, unto all pleasing in Jehovah, being fruitful in every good work in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray this morning. Glory, honor, and praise be unto your name, O God. Now our prayer number says, O Lord, grant me grace for steadfastness and kingdoms to worship O God, resulting in the release of your blessings in my life. I say, serve you faithfully, O God. Father, 
I will pray unto you about this day. Grant me, O Lord, grace for steadfastness and kingdom stewardship of God, resulting in the release of your blessings in my life as I serve you faithfully, my God. Lord, help me, O God. Grant me that grace, O God, to be steadfast in your kingdom stewardship of God. Help me to serve you, O God. Help me, O God, to bring my service to you, O God. Help me, O God, to be faithful to you, O God, in serving you in your kingdom of God. Help me to be a good steward of God. Help me, O God, to be a good faithful steward of God. Help me to be able to earn more than what you have given to me in your kingdom of God. Help me that when you come, you find me faithful of God. Oh, my Lord, that you will release your blessing upon me in my life of God. Grant me ways for God to serve you with God and make me steadfast in your kingdom stewardship. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray this morning. Glory, honor, and praise to your name, Father, we worship you. We just thank you, the Lord, you are a good God. And you hear and you answer our prayers to God. Thank you in the name of Jesus, Christ for making you a God, a kingdom worshiper. Now I pray on my services, Father, I pray your power, oh God. Father, I pray you empower my prayer life by the spirit of grace and supplication to enable me to remain spiritual in my dealings with you, oh God. Father, I pray you empower my prayer life by the spirit of grace and supplication to enable me to remain spiritual in my dealings with you, O God. You said, Lord, you said in your word, yes, that you expect God also worship you to worship you in truth and in spirit, O God. Help you, O God, that Lord, that will remain spiritual before you, O God. That I will enable my spiritual presence before you, O God. Help me cleanse me up, O God. Help me empower my prayer life, O God, by the spirit of grace and supplication to enable me remain spiritual in my Dealings with you, with God, because Lord, it is not my physical presence that will come before you, but it's my spiritual presence to God. So, Lord, help me to you, with God, empower my prayer life, with God, help me, of God, to be diligent in my prayer life, with God, by your spirit, help me, God. Oh, and give me the grace and supplication to enable me to remain spiritual in my dealings with you, with God. And Lord, let my presence be acceptable unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray this morning. Amen. Now our prayer number eight says, Father, in your favor is mine. Give me such favor, result in the supernatural breakthroughs in all that I do this month of God. Oh, Lord, we cry upon you this morning, Father God. Father, in your favor is life, oh God. Give me such favor resulting in supernatural breakthroughs in all that I do this month, oh God. Father, in this month of November 2021, oh God. Oh, Lord, I come to you in your favor, oh God. For, Lord, in your favor there is life, oh God. Give me such favor, oh God. Resulting in supernatural breakthroughs, oh God. Lord, you favor Daniel, oh God. And Lord, you're granting breakthroughs even in the slave land of God. You favor Joseph of God. And even in the dungeons of Egypt of God, you cause him to prevail and to rise up from the prison to become a prime minister. Lord, your favor of God opens up supernatural breakthroughs in our lives of God. This month, I am praying of God for that favor of God. Give me that favor of God. Oh, that favor that resolves in supernatural breakthroughs of God. Let me encounter that favor this month of God. Open me up of God. Open your favor. Favor strength unto you, God. Release your favor rain upon you, God. Release your favor rain upon you, God. And drench me in your favor rain, of God. Lord, let such, such favor resolve in supernatural breakthroughs in all that I do this month, of God. Let me see your hand of favor in everything that I do this month. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Now we will read this morning from Acts 26, verse 8 to 22. Acts 26, verse 8 to 22. Sister Yvonne Edwards will read for us, please. Good morning. Yes. Reading the NIV version, beginning with verse 8, Acts 26. Why should any of you consider it incredible that God raises the dead? I too was convinced that I ought to do all that was possible to oppose the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And that is just what I did in Jerusalem. On the authority of the chief priest, I put many of the Lord's people in prison. And when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. Many a times I went from one synagogue to another to have them punished. 
and I tried to force them to blaspheme. I was so obsessed with persecuting them that I even hunted them down in foreign countries. On one of these journeys, I was going to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priest. About noon, King Agrippa, as I was on the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, blazing around me and my companions. We all fell to the ground, and I heard a voice saying to me in Aramaic, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the gold. Then I asked, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, the Lord replied. Now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen and will see of me. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Verse 19, so then King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven, first to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and then to the Gentiles. I preached that they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. Verse 21, that is why some Jews seized me in the temple courts and tried to kill me. But God has helped me to this very day. So I stand here and testify to small and great alike. I am saying, Nothing beyond what the prophet of Moses said would happen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word for the edification of our souls. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, we have us to see our pastor Dunka, I believe, with us this morning. He's been with us since the week began on enjoying the help of God. And we're going to invite him again to bless us with the word. Over to you, sir. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor, sir. Thank you for the honor again. Uh, good morning, blessed people of God. This morning, continuing our thoughts on enjoying the help of God, we'd like to share on this subject. The power of God brings or supplies help to mankind. The power of God brings or supplies help to mankind. Again, I'd like to read quickly some passages of scripture. Psalm chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, or 1 to 4, it says, A psalm of David, when he fled from Absalom, his son. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. You are my glory, and you are the lifter up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. And Psalm 66, verse 3, says, Say unto God, how terrible, how fearful, how great are you in your workings. It is through the greatness of your power that your enemies submit your, themselves unto you. All the earth shall worship you and shall sing unto you. They shall sing to thy name. Come and see the works of God. He is terrible, he is glorious, he is awesome in his doing toward the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the flood on foot. There did they rejoice in him. And verse 7 says, he rules by his power forever. His eyes behold the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. We're talking today on the power of God that supplies or brings help to mankind. It is the power of God that brings help to all mankind and to his people. Is the power of God that manifests the help of God in the life of his people. Now, may I say that the power of God is a primary part of the inheritance that he has given to us as a church. The power of God is the resource that manifests any kind of help we need from God. The power of God is the driving force that brings the help of God to come to pass in the life of his people. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, To as many as received him, he gave power to become sons of God, even as many as believed upon his name. 
That means that our first contact point as children of God to the power of God is receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior. When that happens, the same power that gets us saved resides in our lives, remains in our life to be our primary resource for help all the days of our life. We can learn to be conscious of that power. We can learn to activate that power. We can learn to call upon that power because it is that power that's the main resource that brings the help of God to our lives. And like, like I said earlier, the power of God that God has saved stays with us throughout our lifetime. Now, what is the nature and character of this power? It is the very same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1, verse 4, that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness and by, the res by his resurrection from the dead. Now, that means we also are sons of God. We also have been declared thus with power. So there is no powerless child of God. All of us have the same resource resource of power. This same power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that resides with us. This same power that was used by God to announce the sonship of Jesus. We also, as sons of God, the same power is what declares or announces our sonship. So the point I'm trying to make is that this power of God is the resource that makes manifest the help of God in our lives. The Bible talking about this power in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 15 to 23, I'll just take a few verses from there. Paul the Apostle was praying and asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, be given to us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of him. And one of the reasons why he was asking and praying for the church that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will function in our lives is that according to verse 19 of Ephesians chapter 1, that we might know what is the exceeding greatness of the power of God towards us who believe. So there's an exceeding greatness, a great working of the power of God towards every one of us that believes. Now, this power is the resource upon which the help of God comes into our lives. It's a resource that drives or manifests the power of God, uh, the help of God in our lives. So Paul said that God, his desire was that the church, we, you and I, will understand the exceeding greatness of this great power that is given to us who believe. And then he said it is according to the power that was manifested when Jesus was raised from the dead. In other words, it is the very same power that raised Jesus from the dead that has been bequeathed to us, given to us as an inheritance to deploy in our life. That is the power that we expect to see coming to manifestation whenever we call upon the name of the Lord for help. Now, the Bible says that this power does two things, two important things from Ephesians 1, 19 and 20. First of all, it says that it raises men up. And then secondly, it says it's set or establishes them. That means when the power of God is flowing in our lives to bring help in any area of our life, it will lift us up out of the circumstances of our lives. It lifts us above the circumstance. Then it establishes us in a place where we are no longer pulled down or going back into that circumstance. So the power of God raises, it lifts us up, it establishes, it, sorry, it promotes, and then it also establishes in our lives. It's a twofold manifestation of power to raise or lift us up, to promote us, to bring us far above the circumstances of our lives and to establish or to see to it that the victory we have, the deliverance we have is secure or is maintained. So this is the twofold working of that power that we have available to us. I'm trusting the Lord that as we, as we uh, keep looking to the Lord and declaring from our heart that he's our helper, that we'll keep experiencing this power from day to day. That not only will God manifest himself to raise us up out of the circumstances of our life that may have seemed to be without solution, but he'll also establish us in a place where we'll never go back to the place we came from, the land of bondage we came from, but he will establish our testimony and establish our deliverance in the name of Jesus. So this power raises, it promotes, it lifts, and it establishes. Now, how can we activate that power? This power is available to us, is residing in us, is that actually the Holy Spirit living in us. How do we activate that power? The first way we activate that power is what we've been doing consistently on this great devotion, devotional time, through prayer, through prayer. Paul the Apostle said in Philippians chapter 1, verse 19, I know that this shall turn to my salvation, to my deliverance, to my help, through your prayer and the supply of God's Spirit. And James chapter 5, verse 16 says, the effectual fervent prayer, the heartfelt, earnest, and continued prayer of a righteous man makes a tremendous amount of power available, dynamic in his working. Just like we've been having brethren lead us in fervent prayer during our prayer times, it's important for us to understand that when we pray fervently, we pray the word of God fervently from our heart. The Bible says that effectual 
power, power is being made available. Power that moves mountains. Power that removes circumstances. Power that invites God to intervene in the circumstances of our life. So the first way that this power is activated is through effectual heartfelt prayer. Not a disconnected prayer, but a passionate prayer like I've been seeing our precious brethren leading us in prayer do all this week. And I'm sure as the, as the devotion has been going on, as we pray effectively, effectually from our heart, passionately, power is being made available. And the Bible said this power is dynamic in its working. It begins to work in the situations and circumstances of our life to begin to maneuver things to work in our favor. So the help of God is channeled or activated by the power of God. And the power of God is activated through a dynamic prayer life. So it's important that when we're praying, we don't pray passively. But from the depth of our heart, we pray a, heart, a prayer that is heart-connected, a passionate prayer coming from our heart, declaring and speaking God's word, bringing to mind his promises. And he says that the power of God is released to bring help into the circumstances of our lives. The second way that this power is made available, activated, is through believing the gospel. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17 says, I am not ashamed of the power of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, unto deliverance, unto healing, unto help, whatever kind of help we need. So knowing that in the gospel, what Christ did for us on the cross, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, as we believe the gospel, the power of God is made available. Our prayers are hinged upon what Christ has done. As we keep in our minds and in our heart what Christ has done for us. Isaiah 53 verse 1 says, Who has believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Verses, verse 5 said, The chastisement of our peace was laid upon Jesus. The punishment that was necessary, required and needful for our well-being in life, for our healing, for our deliverance, for any kind of help that we require in this life was laid upon Jesus. And that is the gospel that Jesus was made a sacrifice, not for, only for our sin, but for any kind of deliverance or help we need in this life. As we believe the gospel and we declare the gospel in the place of prayer, the power of God is made available. And as this power is made available, it is channeled into the diverse circumstances and situations of our lives. And according to the word of God, we see God's glorious and mighty works manifesting in our lives. And I pray that as we consistently believe the gospel, what Christ has done, and as we consistently, from the depth of our heart, passionately express our faith in the gospel through the word of God, upon our lips, in the place of prayer, as we communicate with our Heavenly Father and declare his word in our life, passionately from the depth of our heart, and we release our prayer language, speaking in other tongues, and, and releasing the power of God, speaking in other tongues, and declaring God's word, that the help of God will begin to locate us severally wherever it is needed. And we, I stand in faith with us today that wherever that help is needed, it will not be lacking. And the power of God will break every limitation off of our lives. And the power of God will lift us out of every troubled circumstance and make a way where there was no way and give us consistent and continued testimony in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much, Pastor, for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Glory to God. Well, thank God for that. Listen to me very carefully. God is ever present. God, as a matter of fact, God is everywhere. But that don't mean anything to anybody because the presence of God is real only to those who first and foremost seek for it acknowledging it, approaching it, speaking to him. God is here this morning, is with you. But for that presence to profit you, to impact you, because it's everywhere. Your consciousness in approaching to him, that's why the Bible says, let us come, let us approach him. Let us come boldly. Come with, before him with words. I need you to take that one more leap this morning and say, Father, here am I before you today and open up your heart to you. Just these few minutes, Jesus Christ was talking to the disciples, says, can you not wait with me for one hour? This is just few, five, ten minutes of your life before him, the God of all things. 
that it may shine its light upon you today. And in that light is the communication of his help that changes everything. It's just you and him. Let him hear from you directly this morning. As we go into this personal moment, because I know he told me to gather you that he will refresh you as you call. Now, open up yourself before him. Over to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, mighty God. Blessed be your name. Glory to your name, Lord of heaven. We give you praise. Thank you for hearing us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, let's have Pastor Duncan bless us again this morning before we go. Thank you, sir. Father, we call upon your mighty hand this morning on behalf of your people. We call upon that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. That same spirit that raises and lifts and blesses and helps and promotes men to rest mightily upon your people today. We declare that every limit is broken, every ceiling is shattered, every limitation is removed. Your people break into joyous testimony on every side. Thank you because every time your people call upon you, your strange hand of help will answer them and delight their heart with great testimonies. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. Your hand of blessing and preservation rests upon your church in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Glory to God. We thank God for the week. It's been a great week, marvelous one, and exposition on the help of God. Don't forget, you can always go back to KCAI Media on the on YouTube to refresh yourself with his words because. Pretty much 30 minutes after each meeting is posted on our channel on the YouTube KCAI Media. So that you can refresh yourself. It's a faith comment by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. It is through consistent and continuous hearing that the word enters us. And when, when the word enters, it lightens us. He said, when wisdom enters and knowledge is pleasant unto your soul, he said, discretion will come. That means the light of God will shine on your path. You know the way to go. You know what to do. You know what to say. So let's keep refreshing ourselves with these words. And in doing so, the power of God is released in accomplishing purpose for us. So you can always do that. Like I said, always say this meeting runs Monday through Fridays. We'll be back on Monday. We don't do weekends. Go we'll celebrate yourself in your church. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus is Lord. So we'll be back on this platform next week, Monday, 5 a.m. Mountain Time. And like I said, this month, I've, I'm saying some new names already anyway. That means some of you are moving. This month, let someone be fully established on this platform just because of you, through you. God is waiting to receive that person from you as a seed into your own destiny. Let someone be established. Just This is how we serve God, and this is how we open up destinies. You go for it. Move yourself. Pray. Get Not just come and go. Get that person established today. If you can do more than one, that's over to you, but get that person established. Get them the link, you know what to do. I, I'm, I'm aware of some of us on this platform who once they don't see somebody, they know how to call themselves. They have that connection so that they don't oversleep. We do such things and God honors it. May the King of Glory Himself honor you as you serve Him in the name of Jesus. I pray the light of God's countenance shine upon you. We read from scripture how it was that Paul was on his way to Damascus and that light came from him. <laughs> and we are still preaching him to you today. May that same light shine on you, locate you, distinguish you, bring you out, impact your ways with the grace of heaven in the name of Jesus. May that light shatter the darkness all around you and bring you to the limelight of life. That is the light of God. That is the light of his presence. It's locating you this morning in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Father, we bless you. We honor you in the name of Jesus. Looking forward to hearing those testimonies of the help of God in your life. The impact of his help. Because I know he's working for you already. Just send us my email, KCAI 
denver at gmail.com. The impact of God's help upon your life, because it's there. Always celebrate the doings of God in your life. Always shout it on the mountaintops. Don't take God for granted. As the mission we say, if you take God for granted, you become grounded. You will not be grounded. So let's celebrate it together. Glory to God. God bless you. May the peace of God locate you. You remember, the word says, when he giveth quietness, when he gives it, who can make trouble? I speak today by the grace of God, the quietness of God into the troubles of your life. I said, be quiet in the name of Jesus. He commanded the storms, and there they were. They went into silence. I speak the quietness of God to those storms through your life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. What a great time we've had in His presence this week. We celebrate the hand of God upon your life. Celebrate the goodness of God in your life because that will always be your story. May the favor of God establish goodness for you in Jesus' name. God bless you. See you again next week with testimonies of goodness all around you. Let's share the goodness together this morning. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God bless you. See you on Monday. Jesus is Lord.